Joining us tonight to assess all of this, Fred Flights, national security expert, president of the Center for Security Policy. Fred, good to have you with us. Thank How you. important is the president's decision? We know what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said. We want to know what Fred Flights has to say. Well, Lou, this is a big decision. And just like the president's decision to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, he's recognizing reality and he's defying the foreign policy establishment and doing something that is in the interests of American and Israeli international security. Israel annexed the Golan Heights in 1981. It is obviously part of Israel. There's right. no prospect the Golan Heights will ever be given back. And you know, Lou, there's been talk for decades. And strategically, of, it would be disaster to do so. I think we that, need to That's exactly make it right. Very there's, clear. Been, there's been talk for decades of land per peace deals in which parts of the Golan would be given back to Syria. Think what would happen if the Syrian government had agreed to that with the mm -hmm. presence in Syria of Hezbollah and Iran, this territory would be used to rain down rockets and missiles on the state of Israel. It was the right thing to do. It was a strong act of presidential leadership by President Trump. I want to turn to, uh, you mentioned Syria. The uh, ISIS caliphate in Syria has been defeated. Uh, your sense uh, as to what is required here in the days and months ahead, uh, the president saying uh, 200 uh, U.S. Uh, troops will remain uh, and uh, perhaps another 200 in another uh, uh, position. Uh, give us your, your judgment, your sense of what is going to unfold now. Well, let's talk about how this happened. The president took the shackles off of his military commanders. You know, the Obama administration was micromanaging <laughs> the attacks on ISIS troops in, in Syria. Uh, President Obama reportedly was vetoing 75% of the airstrikes mm -hmm. against but ISIS locations in Syria. You can imagine that. President Trump said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to trust my military commanders to do the best thing. I want you to wipe these guys out. And that's what happened. It looks like there'll be a small U.S. residual force in the region. I don't know how long they'll be right. there. But this is another big victory for the president. And in this hemisphere of Venezuela, uh, it looks more ambiguous there uh, with each uh, passing day. Uh, it is uh, China and Russia are uh, stepping up uh, incrementally, uh, uh, gradually. Uh, there's certainly gradation uh, in their uh, buildup, but a buildup it is uh, in Venezuela. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine is, uh, is the Trump presidency ready to fully assert it uh, in the interest of stabilizing the hemisphere. I don't think President Trump wants to get involved in a, a, a ground conflict in Venezuela. But Ambassador Bolton said, I think today or maybe yesterday, that we are, we are going to look out for the interests of American citizens in Venezuela. There may be 25,000 or more there. Mm -hmm. So, the, I mean, the use of force is on the table, but I don't think the president wants to do that. I hope we're considering things like a naval blockade to block trade of oil between Venezuela and Cuba. The Cuban military uh, security forces are backing up this regime. And I think we need to be pressuring China and Russia to decide it's time to walk away from Maduro. And, and friend, uh, as we ramp up here quickly, China, uh, the trade talks, uh, Larry Kudlow at the beginning of the broadcast talking about his optimism, which is uh, steadfast and reliable. Uh, your thoughts about uh, where we stand with uh, uh, with China in trade talks, uh, also at the same time coupled with uh, great national security concerns, uh, whether it be their expansionist uh, ambitions uh, throughout Asia, even this hemisphere. Uh, your concluding thoughts here tonight. Well, we need to factor those security concerns in. I mean, China's theft of intellectual property, its theft of military secrets, that has to be part of the negotiations. The talks are going better than we thought they would go. It's put the president in a position to demand more from China in light of the fact that the trade deficit from China surged in 2018. So the president's trying to push the Chinese hard. We're, we are in a better position right now because our economy is humming and theirs is in trouble. Fred Flights, always good to see you. Thanks good for being here.